Hi there and welcome to my channel. Today's project is for the Vicky Boutin design team and I am very excited because this is the first layout that I created with color study. You've seen the one that I created for National Scrapbooking Day but it's actually the second one. It's my first one here and I love that as soon as I came in I right away turned on my studio lights and the camera and decided to just play with the collection see what it looked like and just have a feel for it and I love that I just love the colors very vibrant very very nice so my first idea is I want to create a layout all about my daughter uh, no, not my daughter is my niece she just turned 13 while in quarantine because we're in lockdown here in Ontario um so I have a picture that my sister sent me from like you know the celebration and the inspiration for this is going to be the outfit she's wearing and the balloon that's behind her so the balloon behind her is a Mylar kind of shiny pink and she's wearing black and gray. So I'm going to pick up those colors to create this layer. I'm starting with a foundation paper and you're going to see that I've, I've pulled the gray and the black crayons. These are both from the neutral set and I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to scribble them. I have my Tim Holtz uh, glass mat so I'm just scribbling the crayon in the little mat that comes on the side. I'm gonna add some water to dilute the um, our crayon and literally I'm gonna apply it to I'm gonna say around I want to place everything towards the one side of the layer. So I'm going to apply it towards the left hand side of the layer. And all I'm going to do is just going to transfer some of that diluted pigment onto my um, foundation paper. And I'm just going to use my brush just to spread it. I just want to create, um, I'm going to see enough of the watercolor to kind of peek from behind the layer. Okay, a lot of this um, background is gonna show. I'm not gonna hide a lot of it. I had this idea that I wanna have um, background, like watercolor and mixed media, then some layers of um, paper, then the photo kind of gra graduate in that way. So I'm gonna go very simple with my mixed media. I am adding quite a bit of water. You're gonna see that I am adding the pigment onto my foundation paper and I'm just lifting the paper so that the water runs freely on my page, which is great. And foundation paper is probably one of the best papers you can use to create mixed media, especially with heavy application of uh, mediums. But even um, that, when you add quite a bit of water, it's going to warp. And this is the case of this. I did not put it through my um, my mink after I finished. I just kept working. So you're going to see that slowly you're going to see my paper buckle in the center. Um, it's just because I'm adding quite a bit of water and I'm actually playing with it. I'm not just kind of, you know, sometimes I use my brush and extend it. I'm actually going to let it sit on the paper. So you're going to create a little bit of a... Um, kind of a uh, little valley in the middle of my page but I'm okay with that it's not I'm gonna you're gonna see how I'm gonna fix it in a bit so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep adding my mixed media like I said I'm gonna put it towards the left the left side of my layout starting about half of the page I'm not gonna cover the entire left hand side I just want to cover enough that it's gonna peek behind the picture and you're gonna see that I am gonna bring the picture of my knees just to make sure that I have um, the mixed media in the background is gonna peek from behind it and just to finish I'm just picking up the leftover um, pigment and I'm just squeezing at the bristles and that's gonna create that thick or that big droplet when it hits the paper and that's all it's gonna take for the watercolor. I'm gonna go ahead and set it on the side to dry completely on its own. And you're gonna see there's a little bit of a buckle on the paper. So what I wanna add, remember, I'm playing with the combinations that are my knees, um, that are in the picture of my knees. And there's a Mylar balloon at 13 that is kind of pink and shiny. So I'm gonna bring one of the stencils from Color Study. And this is the one that has all those little peaks, kind of, I, I love it. And then I'm gonna bring iridescent glaze. And my idea is I'm actually gonna create a little bit of texture on my page. So here's, I'm gonna, before I go there, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit of how I keep my stencils. Uh, the stencils before 
this release they all were perforated so i was able to keep them inside a snap album but starting now they don't come with perforations so my choice was to get a six by eight insert the ones that come in like you know the six by eight binders and i'm just gonna slip the stencils in it very simple so now going back to the layout you're gonna see that i'm just applying iridescent glaze through my stencil i don't want to have a complete rectangle i just want to have kind of like just some shine on the back so you're gonna see that i'm just adding it on top of the dilute of the watercolor that i have and i'm gonna extend it towards the right because you're gonna see that i want to have a little bit of that texture also peeking on the right of my picture so i'm just gonna go ahead and stretch a little bit more or apply a little bit more of the iridescent glaze again not a perfect application i don't want perfect and on the right hand side i'm actually gonna come in with my stencil brush just to soften the edges a little bit more i want it to diffuse into the background kind of disappear and i'm gonna make sure that that dries completely before I show you what I'm gonna do next so I want to bring some color even though I love black and white I love color so what I'm doing right now is I just want to tint some of the um, iridescent glaze so I let it dry and then I'm coming in with the fuchsia art crayon I'm just gonna scribble the fuchsia art crayon on my piece on my little mat then I'm gonna pick it up with the stencil brush I'm just gonna go in a circular motion and then I'm gonna set the stencil on top of the dry because already dry the iridescent glaze so that it matches and then I'm gonna go with the art crayon on top and what this is gonna create is gonna tint the um the iridescent glaze just gonna give me the kind of shine behind the art crayon and that's all i want so you're gonna see and one of the reasons why i'm doing it this way is because i can control the area where the color goes so i'm gonna make sure that i do the dry application on the left hand side of my of my layout and when it gets to the right you're gonna see that i actually splash a little bit of water onto the art crayon so that's gonna dilute it i just want just because I don't have that much of an application on the right. Remember, I use my stencil brush to just dif um, diffuse the application on the background. I need to have something that is a little bit more vibrant. And by adding water onto the art crayon, I'm activating it. So it becomes a little bit more vibrant. But just to make sure that I emphasize the color and give it another uh, tone, I'm going to add a little bit of the red crayon too. And then I'm going to same thing, a splash of water. And then I'm going to use that towards the left of my layout so that I have a nice combination of the two sides of my page. And just to finish whatever leftover um, art crayon that I have that's been diluted, I'm just going to add a few splatters onto my page and I'm going to set that aside to dry before I can put this together so what that's drawing i'm gonna start playing with the paper so you're gonna see that i'm gonna pick a piece of and i'm gonna use um the 12 by 12 paper pad for this uh just because i'm playing with layers is not a main piece of my layout so i like playing with i'm gonna say the paper pad has a lower quality paper it's not as thick which is great for the layers that i'm playing with so i am backing my picture with a piece of the pink vibrant pink because i want the the balloons to show and then i'm bringing the little flower um pattern and that's from the six by eight behind my picture i'm gonna cut two of the tags i'm cutting this one first this is the one that has the teal with a color wheel kind of the view master um I don't know how you call it, but the Viewmaster little uh, disc. So I'm going to take that because I want to take the disc. I want the discs to be kind of what is going to bring all the colors that I'm going to use on this layout uh, into the picture. So I'm just going to carefully cut a fussy cut the little wheel. And then I'm, but I'm going to try not to destroy the tag. I want to use the top part of the tag just to kind of create. I love working with tags on my layouts. And you're going to see that a lot of my layouts have tags because I love tags. So I want, like I said, I want to bring the color wheel just to kind of bring all the colors of the collection into representation. <laughs> That's the word that I'm thinking. Into my layout. I want to make sure that I keep the tag intact. And as soon as I saw this chipboard that said, all the happiness i knew that was going to be part of my title so i'm just playing with positioning everything but once i put it down i know that i have to bring more um tones i can't leave it so pink so i'm going to go back into the uh, 
paper pad and I'm gonna bring a piece of the paper that has all those circles um, I want to make sure that I don't take the part that has the pink instead I'm gonna go with the part that has the greens and the blues just so it contrasts on my background and again I'm gonna cut I'm gonna say around a four by six uh, piece and that's just gonna be the layer in between the flowers and that pink mat that I added simple as that you're gonna see that I'm just gonna start putting everything in place I played quite a bit with this layout I just love so many ideas but I really wanted to play with paper to play with the embellishments I'm gonna bring those little pom-pom um, banners I think that's what they look like to me and I want to make sure that those help me create movement on my page especially because it's like a celebration you always think of a banner at a party and here's where you're gonna see that I'm gonna start trying to fix the little kind of I have a bubble on my page you can you can see it on the left hand side of my layout so I'm just playing with more of the layers remember I said I'm gonna add tags I'm just adding some of those embellishments I'm gonna bring that arrow that has the holographic um, gold that the entire collection has and then here's what I'm gonna start fixing that little bubble that I have so my solution I'm gonna cut a slit through it and I'm gonna fold the edges towards the inside of my layer and then that's gonna give me the perfect spot where to start the little kind of a banners or bunting so but I need to also back that empty space I cannot leave it like white like that so I'm gonna go back to the same paper that I used those circles and I'm gonna choose a piece of the paper that combines the two sides so I'm gonna bring some of the pink and some of the blue and I'm just gonna go ahead add some glue behind the V that I formed when I folded the paper then I'm gonna glue the pattern paper right uh, right in the spot so that it matches the edge of the layout and then just to make sure that it's totally affixed and it doesn't move I'm actually gonna staple the folded edges with the pattern paper so I know it's gonna be secure after that when it's all it's gonna be all about um, just building the layout so you're gonna see that I added a little bit of foam adhesive behind the picture I want to make sure that it pops from the page and then I'm just gonna start adding everything not adding attaching everything together so I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding my tags lots of double-sided tape behind it a little bit of foam adhesive just to give it that dimension that I'm looking for um, once I have my layers of paper in place I'm gonna go ahead and attach it um, I'm gonna say right on the center of my layout uh, and then once I have that I'm actually gonna add my little color wheel and I'm gonna add a little bit uh, you see that little um, snowflake actually it's not a snowflake is a uh, foam adhesive in the shape of a foam uh, of a snowflake but it's gonna give me a little bit of that lift that I'm looking for and then I'm gonna go ahead and start playing with the little banners of the bunting I'm gonna make sure that they start at the fold edge that I created and that they um, create that little curvature so that it hits the picture and then start underneath and then it's gonna go to the bottom of my title that's my idea it's gonna add to the movement of the layout and um, again I'm gonna add some foam adhesive in between just to make sure that I create a lift I create a shadow that we love seeing on my on layout I like seeing it um, once I have that in place like I said my layout came together pretty easy the inspiration were the colors that you see my niece is wearing a gray sweater and black pants and the 13 with the milder and the shine actually this is my interpretation of the photo and um, once I have that I was I had a hard time kind of saying do not put the entire kitchen sink here I wanted to put everything in under the sun because everything is just so beautiful in this collection so I'm just gonna add a few accents of that holographic gold you're gonna see that I added a star also the all the happiness some of the writing has a little bit of that gold foil so once I have that I was thinking I cannot just have all the happiness of my title so I went into the um, thickers from this collection it has all those colorful numbers and and letters and I just wanted to bring 13 just to make sure that that was present on my layer so you're gonna see that after I finish putting my banners on I'm gonna go ahead add some foam adhesive behind my title I want to make sure that it pops like it's a little bit higher than the photo I want to make sure that so I'm messing um, adding like a I think you call it 
different width of foam adhesive just it's a little it's gonna create more of a height uh, once I have that I'm gonna bring in the numbers like I said I went and looked for a numbers that had a pink and purples just because I want to pick up the color of the numbers in the background and then I'm gonna start playing with some of the chipboard stickers they have these little arrows and I think the one that I pick is it right now especially because it had that fuchsia that I wanted to emphasize on this layout after that I'm gonna add a few more more uh, chipboard stickers I found those stars they had a holographic look and then I'm just gonna bring some more um, stickers from the sticker tablet and then actually I'm gonna put quite a bit of the little there's little circles that have the holographic look so I'm gonna sprinkle them all throughout my page so that they look like confetti that was my idea it's gonna look like confetti everywhere and then I just wanted to continue the movement of the banner and I didn't know how to do it so I went and I found one of the stamps and this is the one that comes with the one that looks like the little clip you're gonna see I'm just adding right now the confetti and then here's why I debated a little bit. I didn't know I knew that I needed to add like I said that movement that I created with the banners so I'm gonna pull like I said one of the stamps uh, and there's a sentiment that says it it's all good so what I'm gonna do with that is um it's really flexible um what do you call it it's like a really flexible polymer so I was able to bend it to give me the curvature you're gonna see that when I put it onto my acrylic uh, block I'm gonna just create that curvature and then I'm gonna stamp it with like really crisp ink but I'm gonna do a second and third generation so that it changes the color so that it picks up on the background and I'm gonna add some of them underneath the title and then I'm gonna bring them right to the left of the tags just so like I said it gives me that kind of wavy look for my layer and that's about it I added a few more of the little uh gold holographic circles just to give me the idea of confetti and I love how this shines I'm gonna add my lines to journal I'm not adding the journaling because it's gonna go into my sister's album for my like my sister's album so she can add everything about my niece's celebration but I love how this turned out love the collection love the colors there's so much you can do with it and i'm sure it's right right now it's hitting all of your doors so make sure you share what you're creating with them thank you so much for joining me and i hope to see you next week take care guys